Howdy folks, Patrick here bringing you another super fluid tutorial on how to build a super app. This time we're going to be building the soda machine. So this, uh, this is directed for those building at the scaling Ethereum hackathon coming up. And our angle on this is that in order to scale Ethereum, uh, we also need to be thinking about scaling money. And uh, by making money fluid and able to flow, uh, it can spread out much more easily and scale much more nicely. So that's the premise. Before we get into the actual tutorial, I do want to say go check out at the top hack.superfluid.finance. The link's right up there. There you'll find some really great ideas on what you like, what you could build, and uh, ideas from other people. You can submit your own ideas, and you'll end up in this nice list down here of people looking for teams. You can also ask to join a team if you find one. And there is some really good links for previous hackathons, uh, previous hackathon projects that you can get and clone and get started quickly. Um, so with that said, let's get started on the tutorial. So let's dive into our example here, the soda machine. This is a one die, one soda situation, and it only works while we're actively paying. So instead of me handing a cashier a single dollar bill, and receiving a soda, I'm going to start streaming dollars to the cashier every single second. And every single second that I'm streaming them, I'm going to be receiving soda back. So it's a live kind of flow rate. It's this is in real time. So in the example, one die a minute and I flow for one minute is one soda. A hundred die a minute and I go for one minute is a hundred. And as soon as I want to stop filling my cup up with soda, I can just turn off my payment stream of dye. Pretty straightforward. If you have not worked with a super app before, you'll want to go to the dashboard. Um, and I should actually mention that this documentation is in uh, the docs under examples and soda machine. So that's where you can find it. If you go to the dashboard, we are going to automatically send you some girly ETH and mint you some test tokens. Once you're in the dashboard, you'll see that you have a balance here of die, and you want to upgrade those so that they can become super tokens. And you do that using the, the upgrade button right here, or um, deposit. I, I don't like the term deposit for this, but it, uh, it makes the most sense uh, sometimes. So uh, make sure that you convert the die that will give you uh, when you log in to super die for this tutorial. Uh, because you cannot, f you can't flow in uh, the regular ERC 20, right? We have to upgrade it so that it can get those awesome superpowers. All right. So after you've done that, then you just click this link here and we are going to load you up with everything you need for this. So um, you're going to get all the contracts in a remix um, workspace and so uh, then you'll be ready to go so the first contract that you should check out is the example this is what we're going to deploy that's going to set us up um, we're going to pass it some arguments about superfluid and which token we want to accept for our soda machine and then it's going to perform these three steps here, deploy, init proxy, and init token. The deploy step is going to deploy our, um, our custom native super token. And the, uh, it's also going to deploy our soda machine and use the, the address for our super token as one of the arguments. Uh, once it's done that, then it's going to initialize the proxy, and that's done using the super token factory. What the um, advantage to using the super token factory here is that 
our custom super token is going to be able to use the same logic as uh, many other super tokens in the protocol. Um, and this function initialize custom super token, all it's doing is just initializing our proxy so that it points to the custom or the super token logic. And then finally, we're going to initialize the token with some details like the name, the total supply, and we're going to mint some and send them directly into the machine. Now, speaking of the machine, um, this is our super app. So we are going to inherit super app base. We are going to um, take some of those arguments that uh, I explained earlier about you know, what's going on in the super flow, like the host, the, the concept flow agreement contract, the accepted token, and then the SOTA token. And we are going to call host.register app, which is a requirement for super apps to do. So um, just to keep that in mind, you don't have to know all the details. Uh, if you want, you can just clone this and edit it to your needs. Um, so Next is the logic, the business logic. But before we get to that, let's talk about what actually triggers this logic. And that is where we get into super app callbacks, which is down here around line 120. And you can see here, these are um, uh, the naming convention here is uh, after agreement created, after agreement updated, after agreement terminated. And each time these are called, uh, we are going to execute the, our business logic that we want to run. And so what calls these, right? Well, these get called anytime we start sending uh, a token into the soda machine. So whenever we create an agreement with the constant flow agreement to say, I want to send, you know, 100 die per minute or one die per minute into uh, to the super or to our soda machine, then this gets called. And that's why they get that's why we call them a callback. So you can see there's one for someone creating a new stream of die. There's one for creating or for updating their stream of die and there's one for stopping their stream of die. Um, but regardless of what they're doing with their stream, we're going to execute the same logic, which is update outflow. And what this is doing is this is just getting the flow rate of die coming into the app. And then it's calling the appropriate function on the constant flow agreement, whether that's to uh, down here to create a flow. If there is an existing one to update it, if there is and to delete it if the incoming die is now zero. So we're just checking the inflow rate and sort of uh, copying that and setting that as the outflow rate for our SOTA tokens. And this uh, might look a little funky to you, uh, but it's just gonna take some getting used to uh, the way that uh, superfluid functions is that we are usually calling the host to do most actions. And um, we sort of wrap up what we want to do inside uh, uh, the arguments for call agreement with context. So there's a little bit of abstraction going on here where we're, you know, we're taking, like you might want to call cfa.update.flow, right? That would be the function that we're trying to call, but we kind of to have to package these things all together in a nice tidy package and then hand them to the host and let the host contract handle it. And you can think of the host as like the engine of Superfluid. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. Let's just go ahead and deploy it and then uh, start to play with it and we'll get a better idea of what's going on. And then you can go back and look more uh, closely at these contracts. So we have a couple of arguments to deploy our example. Our example is what's going to kind of kick off all these things and take care of the stuff for us. Um, you're going to get the arguments for this in the documentation from earlier. Uh, we've got the host contract, which is like that, you know, the superfluid engine. We've got the constant flow agreement contract. 
which handles uh, streaming tokens. We have the accepted token, which is our die token. And we have the, uh, fact, the address of the factory, which uh, is used to initialize our proxy contract for the super token. Okay, so I'm gonna fire this transaction off. And once that's deployed, we are going to get a nice little interface that's gonna allow us to get the address for the two contracts that we deployed, the super token and the soda machine. So let's get the soda machine first. We're gonna copy that and let's load up the soda machine at this address. So what functions do we have here? Well, we have our callbacks, but we're probably not going to be calling those manually. We're gonna allow the host to call those for us because um, there's no reason to really call these. Uh, what we're interested in is in get net flow, and we see that it's zero right now. Get net flow is a helper function that I added, uh, which just calls get net flow for the accepted token, which is DAI. So this is how much DAI is flowing into the, into the uh, soda machine. And if all goes well, that's the same amount of soda that should be flowing out since it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Let's now look at the address for our super token that we created. And you might be tempted here to load up um super let's see what is it super uh native super token contract so that you might be tempted right because that's what that's the contract we deployed was the native super token but remember because this is a proxy we won't actually want to load the logic that sits behind that proxy so we're going to load the uh i super token you could also just do super token um because we're just getting the interface and using that to access our super token. So now that we've loaded our super token, let's check some things just to do a gut check. We've got a total supply of a million and uh, this is all looking correct. While we're here, let's check the balance of the soda machine and make sure that it received those 1 million tokens. Yes, it did. So we are ready to go and start using our soda machine. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to get the address of our soda machine and send die to it using the dashboard. So we hit the send button and then we'll select die and we'll do one soda a minute. <laughs> Looks good. Let's fire that off. Let us know if you um, have any problems with the dashboard. Um, this is very cutting edge stuff. And so we're always looking at ways to improve it. Okay, so while that's happening, let's go back and check, is, um, check the balance of our super token in the machine. Okay, it's still a million, so that stream hasn't started yet. There it goes, I see it confirmed. And yep, now the balance is slightly less. And that's because the stream started, but also because there's a small deposit uh, for opening any new stream. Uh, let's, let's now check the my wallet balance of soda right because i should i should have some now because 
I'm paying for it. Yep, there we go. There's a, a small amount of soda that is now in my wallet. And uh, let's do another check uh, on the soda machine. What's the flow of dye into the soda machine? Yep, that's um, 60 per minute. So there you have it. That is the soda machine. We covered a lot of ground today. We, um, we built a super app um, or we deployed a super app. Um, we uh, registered it with the host uh, here and then we uh, executed our business logic based on uh, what what is happening with the incoming tokens with uh, with our callbacks we also deployed a custom super token uh, and we initialized it and got it all set up with our super token factory so that it can rely on the same logic as all the other super tokens. And because it lives inside the superfluid ecosystem, we kind of use this term native uh, to describe that because there is no other ERC version of it. It is a native uh, token to the superfluid protocol, meaning it only exists there. And it gets all the benefits of a super token from day one. So if you're trying to build, um, you know, an application that uses a super apps, uh, this could be definitely a, a forkable example that you can start to play with. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys build. Please let us know in the Discord if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys at the next tutorial.